So my name is Neil Murray, I work for the European Space Agency, um, I've been there for about nine years. Uh, my job title is uh, I'm a propulsion engineer but I'm also a system engineer. Um, propulsion engineer, if you want to get a little bit fancy about it, means uh, I'm a rocket scientist. But, uh, and system engineering means that uh, in any development somebody has to know what's going on everywhere to understand if, uh, if you do something in one, uh, one part of the subsystem, what impacts it will have somewhere else. So that's my other task. Until, about, uh, until I arrived at ESA, I had a, an academic uh, career. Uh, I did mechanical engineering in Cork Institute of Technology. For me, mechanical engineering was a, was a fantastic, and, and I'll, I'll never regret doing mechanical engineering because it's given me the opportunity to do all the stuff I've done now. But uh, when I was 17 or 18 years old, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, and mechanical engineering was the natural thing because I, I like maths, I like physics, I like science, and uh, it gave me a bit of everything. I went to MIT which is a university, quite famous university in Boston. Uh, I did um, aerodynamics for uh, internal, uh, internal aerodynamics for uh, centrifugal, centrifugal compressor for NASA. Uh, so I was paid to do cool stuff. For, I was paid to work for NASA, which was another brilliant thing. And then I went to, I then uh, decided I want to come back to Europe. Uh, and I went to Imperial College. Uh, there I um, did hyper, out, uh, hypersonic aerodynamics. Hypersonic is uh, faster than supersonic, and supersonic is faster than the speed of sound. One of the one of the problems with um, with traveling high speed is that you generate shock waves, and shock waves have uh, the unfortunate uh, um, side effect of potentially burning your spacecraft, of uh, of creating uh, unwanted aerodynamic effects. So I had a I had a PhD thesis to understand how fundamentally we can understand these and how we can improve our design. Because I did some of my work for, for ESA, I went to uh, ESA as a research fellow. Uh, and there I started uh, designing uh, concept vehicles for hypersonic uh, travel. Uh, and after two years of that, I started uh, as a full-time staff, and that's what I do now. So since working at ESA, uh, I've had a number of roles. When I started as staff there, I was doing research and development in propulsion, as a rocket scientist, I guess. Uh, exaggerating a little bit. Uh, the first projects I worked on was looking at uh, how to optimize or how to understand better um, the staging between uh, upper stage and lower stage of, of uh, Vega rockets for example. Uh, it's, it's a very important thing because uh, when you, when you uh, drop your first stage the last thing you want is for it to suddenly get a peak in uh, thrust of remaining fuel and for it to crash into your upper stages where your payload is. So it's good to understand these things and this was one of the things I worked on. I also worked on um, understanding how propellant is managed in space because unfortunately in space you don't have a gravity vector to sink it down to the bottom where the, where the fuel linden pipes are, you must, you must manage it using capillary action for example. Uh, and I've also looked at um, how, how we impact on our environment which also is something that ESA is very, uh, very, um, finds very important and stresses a lot. So we have rocket, uh, rocket launches, so there's a huge life cycle behind a rocket launch that you have to understand and minimize the impact on. So I've worked on that too. So like any job, there's the high points and the low points. And, and for me, the, with, with my job, the, the high points really outweigh everything else. The, the, the good example I have of this um, is, I mean, I work in the space uh, industry, so putting things into space is like the, you know, the, the the bees knees the cat's pajamas and now I have uh, or I have in the past I have put something in space with my fingerprints on I was in charge of it it went into space it was on the space station the astronauts were playing around with it I was in control room and they were talking back and forth integrating it and it re-entered and it sent data back to ground and it had my fingerprints on it and, and it, anytime I look back on that I it sometimes it feels a bit like a dream that uh, that I've done that and that my DNA was up there and and we were all worked together as an engineering group and we all sat, we went through the highs and lows of it, the, the good and the bad, and it's just for me it was outstanding. And it's something I'll always remember and I have a picture of myself and my son with the AT, with the hardware going past overhead, it's just outstanding. Of course there's the downside that's with any job, you have to, you have a huge amount of admin that you have to go through. Um, there's the pros and cons of working in a team, working with people. Working with people can be fantastically uh, satisfying, but it also can be quite tedious and quite. Sometimes it just gets stressful, and you have to learn a ways of dealing with people. 
uh, and the politics. I mean, I work in an international organisation. You have different different uh, ways of thinking. You have different nationalities, and you have to be able to manoeuvre your way through that. But for me, that's one of the small things, one small price to pay for, for touching a piece of equipment, working on it, touching it, and putting it in space, and then watching it do what it's supposed to do. It's just amazing, and I, I'll never forget that uh, that experience. Throughout the career, I guess you you always have certain points when you make uh, crucial decisions, and people people make an impact on these decisions. Of course, my parents have always encouraged science and maths, so you can't do anything without your parents. Uh, when I was in um, in secondary school, I had a, a physics teacher there who was just outstanding, and he really, instead of teaching you physics, he made physics uh, real for me. And I think the whole class went from falling asleep in German class or Italian class to being wide awake in physics class, and he was outstanding. Uh, and now um, you still meet people who make a, an impact on you, but for me, it's when you're early in your career, it's when the impact of, of people around you make the biggest difference because they really focus you on what, your path and what you're going to be interested in. In CIT, every year in third year, you had to do, uh, and fourth year, sorry, you had to do a, a final year project which was organised. Uh, and you had to present it at the end of the year. You knew you had to present it, and not just present it to your, 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 the students around you, but to outside, to the public, to other uh, universities. And, and for me, this also, it was very stressful. It, it brought the reality of, of working life to you, that you had to do something in the end, you had to have a good outcome, or else you're gonna look a little bit stupid. And, and this, for me, was also very valuable. And that was also a bit scary, but I guess when you're young, you just do things not because they're scary, but because they're cool. And, and I did it, and, and for me, that was an outstanding uh, decision. So always, for me, you always have to take the big leap of faith. And, and if, it, if it works, it works spectacularly. And if it doesn't work out, it's still an experience. And you should always go for it. Uh, and you have the obvious answer that maths, uh, physics, and you go to university and you do one of the associated degrees. But I also think it's important that you get good experience uh, when, you're, when you're young. Um, doing the events like uh, CANSAT in Ireland, uh, doing other things like working in industry, learning how to weld, all of these things are a fantastic experience. They, they tell you what you're good at, they tell you what you like, they tell you what you don't like, which is just as important as anything else. And, and so for me, it's basically finding what you, what you like to do and doing it, and making sure that you've done enough things when you're young that you know exactly what you want to do when you're older.